Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson. This is part of our extended Tech Talk series with our friends from Halo ITSM. I have with me Tom Petley. Tom, how are you doing? Hi, Mike. Very well, thank you. Yeah, good, thanks. Fantastic. So I'm so excited to have you join us again um, to share uh, the, one of the many exciting things that we're able to do within Halo ITSM. Um, as I've uh, talked before on some of my tech talks and in some of these extended tech talks, Halo is a, an ITSM, an IT service management platform. So we have all of the core ITSM process every, everybody's used to, you know, things like uh, incident and, and service request management and change management, problem management, self-service portals, CMDBs, all of those wonderful things that make up a full-fledged IT service management platform. And these are all part of the core Halo platform. You're not buying these as modules. Um, they are all part of the core platform. Uh, and the Halo processes uh, are all aligned with ITIL best practices. So one of the things that, that Tom and I wanted to share with uh, everyone today is to take a quick peek at change management within Halo um, and how change is aligned with ITIL best practices from capturing our details to our approval processes all the way through to a basic post implementation review uh, before you're closing your change out uh, and completing it. So Tom, I'll turn it over to you. I know you wanted to share kind of what this looks like in Halo. Yeah, fantastic. Um, let me just share my screen. So I thought today we'd just run through, like you said, just a very basic change flow. Um, I'm going to take it just from raising a standalone change. We're not going to we're not going to raise it off a problem or a known error. Um, we'll just raise a standalone change here. Um, it's going to go up here and raise a change. Um, so this is within Halo. This is the kind of our change form, and we're ITIL aligned, so we've got all the standard ITIL change types. And you can have it set so you determine the change type based off the risk and impact, um, or you can have it so you choose your change and you select your risk and impact later. Um, as well as that, if you are doing a standard change, um, you can use the templates as well. To be honest, you can do that with standard and normal changes as well. You can have uh, templated normal changes or you can have templated standard changes as well. Um, I'm going to raise one, just a, a normal one, a normal change, and I'm going to do a non-templated one just to show you how the form process goes through. So we'll just raise an example change here. You'll see here, it's going to suggest us templates as well. So it's part of the process of raising it. You can just select the templates from that summary box. It's almost like a little search bar. Um, we'll do a, do a kind of a low, low risk. Uh, low impact one as well. So this is our out of the box form. Um, it's very, very straightforward. It's just drag and drop to change the fields over. And you'll see here that by default, none of these fields are mandatory. That's because we, we have it suggested that you raise it in a draft format. So it drops into the system as a draft. Um, and then before you submit it for approval, that's when you'd make all the fields mandatory. That just gives you a little bit more flexibility if you don't know all the information when you're first raising it. Maybe you need to reassign it between a few different people to get all the information for the change. So it doesn't have to be mandatory. You don't need to know all the information when you're first raising it. Likewise, with the time and the date um, of the change, you might not necessarily know that when you're raising it. That can be entered later. I think in this example, I will just raise it now so I can um, show you how that would appear on the calendar as well. On the I'll put this in for today, and that'll just show on our forward schedule of change. Let's go for them. Um, let me just drop a few of these into here. You'll see here that we can link it back to CIs and assets, and also services if you prefer as well. And they can actually drive our approval as well. And just one other thing to highlight, it's very configurable this. We've got this set up here with kind of free text boxes just to put in the plans and backup plans. If you prefer, you can actually have this as uh, proper task lists of um, different stages to the plans and also to the actual change plan itself. That could be proper list of um, kind of itemized tasks. Um, I'm just going to raise that, drop that into the system. And you'll see that just drops in in the draft format um, in our list of draft changes here. As part of this process, you'll see we've just got a five step process out of the box. Me and Mike kind of talk quite a bit offline about um, how every everybody's change processes are slightly different. 
Um, so we kind of give you an out of the box template, or we've got a few out of the box different kind of workflows that we can provide. And then we kind of tweak it from there. It's just configuration and change the flow from there. Um, but this is probably kind of the one I'd recommend as our starting point with these five step process while we go from kind of raising the change through the authorization process through implementation, then into our post implementation review and then the closure of the change. Um, so once it's been raised, uh, I'm just going to submit that for approval. And again, in Halo, we've got so many um, configurable approval processes um, that you really do have flexibility exactly how the approval works for the, um, for the change. In this scenario, um, let's see here, we've raised it for approval. And if I go onto this approval process tab, it's actually myself here that's the approver. Just for demo purposes, I can show you how the accept and reject buttons. In reality, the person raising the change would, uh, wouldn't be the approver, um, but it makes it a little bit easier to, to kind of demonstrate the flow. Um, so as part of this, you'll see here, we have options of accepting, rejecting. I can also refer it to CAB if I want to, and pass it on to CAB. And I think in this example, I will just refer that to CAB just to kind of show you that process. Um, I'm going to set this to kind of a waiting cap, keep it as low priority. Um, and I'll put a note in there for, for cap. And you'll see when you go to cap, there are again so many options around how you configure this. I've just got this set so I can choose my cab members manually. You could actually automate that and have the system automatically determine who the cab members are. And that could possibly be based off um, things like the technical owners or the business owners of different services or, or CIs or just, um, just a general cab with different role-based um, role members on there. Um, I'm going to take myself out of this one and just send it across the other two. So you'll see here we're now kind of awaiting cab. We've got our notes in here and our approval process just has our cab members on here. So again, we've got that full audit trail of exactly um, who's going to approve it. And the approvers can either um, approve it via email well, they can go into the application and approve it from there. It just gives us that full traceability of exactly who's approved every single change. Something else me and Mike kind of discussed offline was the um, concept of approver delegation. And that is something that Halo offers as well, where you can, uh, you can have approvers delegate their um, kind of authority for a set period of time. So something else is worth considering as part of the system. And again, you get that full audit trail of exactly how that's um, been approved. I'm just going to override these approvals just to kind of push it through the process. And you'll see here now that, yeah, now we're on to the implementation phase of this, um, of this change. And just one final step before we kind of push it through to review, I just want to quickly show the calendar today as well. So if we go across to the calendar, you'll see here that we have this probably timeline view is a nicer view to look at. Um, we can see this example change here on the calendar, um, see when it's scheduled in. And there's all sorts of options around how we display that, how we color code it, uh, what options you want down the left hand side, um, things like that, where we want to show kind of approved changes or we want to show kind of not yet approved changes. There's a whole range of options you can have on there. Um, and then finally as well, you can have change freeze periods as well, which can also display on the calendar as well, if that's something you'd like to um, set up. And that's just periods of time where, where you don't, um, Kind of your, your changes aren't allowed to go through without kind of additional approval. Sorry, we're about to change. Um, so once that's been approved, you'll see here we it's now been approved. And I'm just going to push that through to, to implement it and just quickly demonstrate the kind of post implementation review as well. So we'll flag this as a successful change, put some notes in there, and I'm just going to put this through to in progress. But you often have a status there for, um, for PIR as well. And then finally, let's move on to the review stage. And in practice, you would normally have a little delay there. We'd normally implement like a, a couple of days delay there, possibly even a week's delay there, just, just to make sure any, any issue, kind of issues that might have manifest themselves from the change have enough time to kind of come through. It's not too much point in doing a review straight after the change is implemented then kind of a few days later you find out something else has happened. Um, so we always kind of recommend just having a couple of days delay there just before going for review. 
And then once it's been reviewed, um, we would then kind of close off and go for a closure procedure on that. Um, I'll put some closure notes in there. Um, so it's just a very basic but hopefully intuitive flow to um, how we kind of recommend implementing um, yeah, change control in, in Halo. Um, Mike, did you, did, is there any kind of points there you just want, wanted to discuss still? No, it, it, it's very straightforward. It's well aligned with you know best practices from an ITIL perspective. Um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, you know we're, we're gonna be doing a webinar coming up and we'll be able to dive in a little bit deeper into some of the things like approval delegations uh, and other concepts that are built out of the box within the Halo platform. There's been a lot of thought put into what are the common things that customers need. So it's so exciting uh, when we're able to share uh, Halo with, with, with customers because there's things that they don't always think about uh, that are things that they need to be able to do. Uh, and uh, there were already have been thought about and are there and available within the platform to be used. And as you said, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the forms are set up the way the forms are set up, but they can be set up differently to better align, uh, best align with that customer's process and their uh, uses of ITIL. And what are they taking? Because ITIL is not prescriptive that you have to do X, Y, and Z. Um, it's uh, uh, a set of best practices and you're going to take from those best practices what makes the most sense for your organization and your process. And that's why <clears throat> Tom and I had talked before, um, uh, one of our many conversations, I've never quite implemented change the same twice in two organizations because everybody has a little bit different spin on how the organization and how those processes flow within their organization. So it's just so exciting to have an easy, intuitive process that's very repeatable, uh, but has the flexibility to be adapted to suit the customer's particular needs, while still starting out as aligned with what the best practices are um, that everybody has, that's been defined from an ITIL perspective. So looking forward to seeing more uh, as we do a few more of these shorts on some of the many exciting things that we're able to do within the Halo ITSM platform. As always, Tom, thank you for joining us uh, and uh, sharing uh, the, the, the wonderful stuff uh, that you guys have built at Halo. Never at all. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great. And uh, we'll be having a, an upcoming webinar. We hope you all can join us. Uh, and uh, we'll see you again as we continue to explore the great capabilities of Halo ITSM.